Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Been going through my comments and trying to reply to everybody as much as I can. There's been a big uptick in questions about the bird of paradise. I figured I'd whip out the camera while the puppy's asleep and we could talk about them. I've done a fair amount of videos talking about the bird of paradise, but they're typically repotting videos. And in those videos, I do talk about the care and some troubleshooting and whatnot, but they're mixed into vlogs. They're really long. With all these comments, I realize I've never just done a quick little, how do I grow them? How do I take care of them? What do they like? What do they dislike? You know, all that stuff. So let's do it. Here I have one of my bird of paradise, white bird of paradise. I've had this one for a fairly long time. It's been moved around a bunch, repotted a bunch, hence all the repotting videos that I've done with them. These are excellent plants. I find them to be pretty versatile in the sense that they're multiple ways that you can grow them so long as a few specific requirements for their care are met. Really the care for these plants when it comes to keeping them indoors is fairly basic and on par with a lot of house plants, particularly house plants that like a good amount of light. So we'll quickly go over just the how to, I'll have it all up on the screen, and then uh, talk about how a lot of people actually grow them versus how we probably should be growing them for ideal and optimal health and growth and then maybe go over some troubleshooting or it'll be mixed in there when talking about how to grow them. All right, white bird of paradise. Quite large for a house plant. Expect them to get anywhere from, I don't know, eight feet to 25 feet tall. Not indoors, obviously. They're going to grow more slowly in the house, but eventually they'll get too high for the ceilings. They like a really good amount of light. I'm talking as much light as you can give them. They can take direct light, but remember through a window that that can be magnified. So if you have a room that receives full sun to make sure it is maybe tucked back just a smidge from the window, watch out for burning on the leaves. That's not normally a problem with these plants, but if you do have a house that somehow gets that much light, might be something to watch out for. General consensus is that about four hours of bright and direct light or even direct light is what's best for these, but I would try and bump that up even more if possible, just to have the best form and growth and sturdiness in the plant. When in active growth, they are moisture lovers. So it's best to keep that potty mix consistently moist, only allowing the top maybe two to three inches to dry out while the plant is in active growth, meaning typically spring through fall. Let them dry out more than that during the winter. In the winter time, I just keep an eye on them and I'll let them dry out 50%, sometimes even more than that. Just kind of depends on what the plant's doing. If it looks like it wants to grow, then I'll keep it more moist than that. These are heavy feeders. So during that active growing season, fertilizing them monthly with an all-purpose fertilizer, it's gonna do them good. They'll appreciate it. You can amend the soil with organics like compost, sea kelp, earthworm castings, alfalfa meal. Reduce fertilizing within about six weeks of first frost if you're keeping them outdoors and you move them inside. If you already have them indoors, then I would say reduce fertilizing when you're probably a couple months out from the winter solstice when the sunlight's going to be starting to drop back. You don't want to have the plant thinking and being pushed to growth when it doesn't want to because then you know, just get weird lanky growth on them. It's important that their potting mix is organically rich and well-drained. It's The well-drained part is really important. They don't want to sit in water. They're going to be really prone to root rot if they're sitting in water or the soil isn't airy enough for the, it to dry out quickly. And then particularly in drier climates, it's generally good to make sure that there isn't any air blowing directly on the plant or any drafts that can lead to brown edges and brown tips and make the plant just not look as nice. They just don't appreciate it. They prefer a more humid environment. They can take a more arid environment, but for ideal growth, they want some moisture in the air. And while they do like to be somewhat pot bound, it's still a good idea to repot them about every 18 to 24 months, which is about on par with typical house plants. Just look out for roots coming off the surface of the soil, out the bottom of the pot. And with Bird of Paradise, the pots will oftentimes bulge and sometimes break because those roots will push right through them. If that pot's really firm, you'll be able to feel it with your hands. If it's a plastic one, then it's time to go ahead and repot the plant. Yeah, see, fairly basic house plant stuff. Avoid those drafts, give them lots of light, heavy feeders, keep them fertilized. Nothing too complicated. And sometimes leaves split, that's okay. All right, so that was fun. There is the, what we should be doing with these plants. Now let's talk about what a lot of people do with them because most of us, don't fertilize them every single month. Most of us don't make sure that their soil's consistently moist at all times. And there's the reason why. They're pretty sturdy plants so long as they get the right amount of light and they aren't overwatered. While I do make sure that this plant 
gets plenty of moisture. It's up on drip irrigation during the spring, summer, and early fall. In the winter time when I have this inside, it just gets a splash of water like every 10 days or so. It's always been perfectly happy with that, but the space I keep it in is fairly humid. So it's, I keep them in my garage, not in my house where I can control that moisture better. But if they were in my house where the air is more dry, I'd maybe be watering it once a week. I don't know. I feel like it would probably still be about every 10 days or so. Like I said, you just kind of have to watch the plant. If it's in active growth and you're seeing it's pushing up spears and those spears are moving up fairly quickly from the middle, that's a spear in here. Sometimes you just have to watch your plants and get to know them. The majority of questions that I get about these plants has to do with them browning and yellowing. There's an older leaf on one of mine. You can see those brown tips in there. It's just a little bit. It doesn't bother me. Some brown tips and splits, I'm okay with it. That's what they look like naturally. And I actually kind of like it. it, gives the plant character. Brown tips are typically going to be a result of the plant wanting more water or there being a draft. And brown edges, if there's brown edges on the leaves, that typically means that the plant is just too dry. So need to up the watering or up the moisture in the air or both. Then evaluate the area, see if there's wind blowing right on the plant that might be causing some crispiness and some dryness on the leaves. If that's the case, then you see if you can change that airflow or maybe relocate the plant. And then when you see yellowing, which I don't have any here to show you, but yellowing on those leaves typically means the plant's getting too much moisture. If you're having trouble deciding which one it is with the plant, we'll just stick your finger down in that soil a few inches down. If the soil's dry and the leaves are brown, that's going to be a moisture issue. If the leaves have yellowing on them and that soil feels wet, and it's been wet for a long time, like over, I'd say, I don't know, three to five days since the plant's been watered, then that's gonna be too much water. Just back off on the watering, make sure that the plant isn't sitting in a saucer with water in it. It needs to be raised up, so have some pebbles or something there so that the bottom of the pot's not in contact with that water. Now, if that foliage is yellowing very quickly and there's a whole bunch of it yellowing, then maybe look beyond just the plant being overwatered. Perhaps there could be a rot issue going on to look for that, it's a good idea to get down. It's kind of gross, but get down, smell that soil, see if it's stinky. If it's stinky, that's rot. If it's rotting, you wanna repot the plant, pull it out from the container, get all the soil washed out from those roots, may need to spray it with a diluted peroxide, something like that, or some ban rot, something that'll help kill that off and then repot it into a new clean sterile medium. Make sure you clean the pot if you're using the same one. Blitz and tears happen. It's okay, don't worry about it. Like I said, I think it gives the plant character especially if you have them outside and there's air moving around then you get some little rips in there don't freak out about it the plant's going to be okay i get it a lot of us see the pictures online and just want those beautiful shiny glossy perfect leaves on the plants but it's really it's going to be okay more warmth and light the plants receive the faster they're going to grow look at the leaf this one just opened up the sun's like right in my eyes so i don't know if y'all can even see it it's a big leaf that's why I like to move these outside during the summertime. They get that heat and the airflow and they just really seem to appreciate having a little summer vacation out on the patio. But like I said, that does really increase their growth rate. So if you don't have a space where you can accommodate them as they grow very quickly, then maybe just don't move it out. They're gonna grow more slowly in the house. There's nothing wrong with that. Plants can still be healthy if they have slower growth. Sometimes when being grown indoors, you may notice that the new growth, these spears, as they come out and they should be unfurling, they'll get stuck and just the lower portion will unfurl, but the rest of it won't. When that happens, typically what I like to do is give them a good spray with just a water bottle and some clean water. And I'll do that periodically for about 48 hours. And if that doesn't loosen it up enough to get the, to go ahead and open up, then you can go in and just peel it open. I think it's better to go ahead and give the plant some moisture and see if that's going to help things before, you know, tearing it up. The stuck leaves are not uncommon though. That's just a result of low humidity and low moisture, which is pretty common indoors. Uh, in regards to this, hey baby, how you doing? So if you think that those brown tips or edges is the result of low humidity, and not that the plant's being underwatered, then I would suggest maybe a humidifier. I don't typically like the pebble trays with water in them for the bird of paradise or really any four plant. Sometimes it works when the plant's small, but once they get taller, the, a lot of that moisture that's evaporating up from those pebble trays, they don't really reach in that foliage. Most of that's just gonna blow away by the time that gets up there. You'll have to use a really deep dish. You'll have to refill it fairly frequently. And then misting the foliage is always risky with broadleaf plants with anything that has this much surface area on it. 
So unless you're using a really clean water that has a low TDS, I means not a lot of minerals or anything in it, and that has the potential to settle on those leaves, dry up and leave spots on there, which is counterproductive. I want the leaves to be clean so that photosynthesis can take place efficiently. And really when it comes to misting foliage, once that all evaporates off, that well, the whole process of providing humidity is gone. You only get a few minutes from that. So a humidifier works, having the plant surrounded by lots of other plants helps keep that humidity up as well, or I can keep it near a fish tank maybe. That's not gonna hurt it, it'll only help. It's interesting with these plants because they don't necessarily have to have humid conditions. They just grow better with them. But I see them in the Southwest doing okay. They have them all over Southern California where it's not very humid, right? pretty dry there and they're doing okay. They tend to look different. Sometimes they're more stout plants that start to trunk earlier, but they do all right. It's just different when you have something in the house and in a pot. It's gonna vary from climate to climate. It may not even be an issue for you. You might live someplace totally dry and you don't have any of these problems. That's great. You don't even have to worry about it. If the foliage is coming out on your plant really long and kind of gangly and droopy, meaning that it just looks weak and hangs down. The leaves are kind of flaccid. Usually when that happens, it just means that the plant's not getting an ideal amount of light. And lower light in general will produce more elongated, gangly growth on the plant. The more light you can give them, typically the better. I just realized I've been tearing this leaf up as I'm touching it and talking about it. Sorry, leaf. Sometimes the leaves on these will start to kind of crimp and buckle, come out, start to fold and look just sort of like they're being tightened up and they'll turn all brown. When that happens, that's also usually the plant not getting enough light when it's in the house. Outdoors, that can be a shock from being moved into too much sunlight way too quickly or can be from frost. Frost will do that too, that curl with that tight crimp on it. But if it happens to your plant inside, normally that just means it's not getting enough light. and The leaves are just kind of like, okay, I give up, that's enough time to die. And apart from brown leaves, yellow leaves, there's also the issue of spots. So sometimes there might be lots of little spots on the leaves. Sometimes they'll be just brown. Sometimes they'll have more of a yellow or an orange tinge to them. Those can be caused by everything that we've already talked about when it comes to overwatering and underwatering. That can also be the result of a lot of other things. Too many to go over in this video, but I can give a quick breakdown of the possibilities and you just sort of have to use the process of eliminations to figure out which one it is. Those discolorations can be caused from too much water, not enough water, can be caused from dry air, can be caused from a lack of airflow, can be caused from too much sun exposure, can be caused from viral, fungal, or bacterial issues as well. Oh, and pests. Could be pests. Oh, and over fertilization. Oh, and too much salts or chlorine buildup in the soil. Look, okay, you see why that would just be too much for one video? That's, that's a lot of different variabilities that can cause all of those spots and discolorations. Before jumping to conclusions and just thinking that, oh, it must be a virus or a fungus or a bacteria, think about the fertilizing. Has it been very frequent? Maybe it's been overdone somewhat or perhaps it's been a long time since the soil's had a good flush. Every so often it's a good idea to just let the water run through that pot and flush everything out, but that's not that useful if it's caused by chlorine. That shouldn't be very common though, but it's potentially possible that you live someplace where the chlorine in the tap water is high enough, concentrated enough that it's going to cause some issues there. You'll probably notice that on some of your other house plants too, probably before you'd even notice it on the bird of paradise. And then again, backing that up to the root rot. If you notice the odor in the soil and you have lots of little spots on the leaves, that could be root rot. So everything I mentioned before, clean it out, get it sterilized, and then use a ban rot or whatever you think is the most appropriate. And sometimes you'll just see discoloration on the older foliage. That's normal, it happens. As long as it's not coming out on the new foliage and on any foliage that's you know within a, I'd say a couple months old, then it's likely not necessarily something that's systemic and something you really need to worry about. Though it would be a good idea to look into what's going on there just to be safe. You saw me break off that broken leaf there. I just pruned these as needed, but I will say I just didn't do it because I'm filming a video right now. That, that cut really should be made further down in the plant. So as close as you can get it to the trunk area in here, the better. Bird of Paradise plants sucker very, very heavily. So if you get one that just has a couple of plants in the pot, within a year or so, maybe two years, once it starts to get somewhat root bound into the container, they'll start putting up new growths left and right. And then you can kind of lose some of that fun 
appearance that you get from just seeing the main stem on the plant. So if that's bothersome and you don't want all the little offshoots coming up when it's time to repot the plant, you can go ahead and remove the suckers with a really sharp, clean knife. You just go in, cut those out, and move them into their own pots, give them away, do whatever you want with them, that doesn't matter. Just make sure to leave a lot of roots on the main area of the big part that you want to keep, right? You don't, that's, you don't want to hurt your big plant. I just leave them in place. I don't mind all the little offshoots. I think it adds character to the plant and it just shows that it's happy. One of my other common questions I get with this plant is about flowering. So the white bird of paradise, they don't typically flower indoors unless you have like an atrium or a spot with a good amount of heat, humidity, and tons and tons of light. I've only had my white bird of paradise flower for me once and it, it was just, it just did it on its own. I don't know what triggered it because I was growing it the same way. I was always growing it and it just, one day I noticed that it had a flower sticking out from inside of the growth. The flowers on the white bird of paradise stay very close and tight into the crown. They pop out here, they're big flowers. Yeah, it was totally random. Couldn't give any tips on to why that happened because I hadn't been growing it any differently. It wasn't a year with a repot anything like that it was typically they wouldn't flower in a year that they're repotted but you never know if you're growing them outdoors maybe they will for you that's where the comment section comes in handy you have a white bird of paradise that flowers for you reliably indoors comment down below and let us all know what you're doing i've seen lots of blogs online where people talk about like special compost teas and things that they do to encourage the blooming. I, I can't say whether or not any of it works. I've never tried it. If you are growing these plants for their flowers, and that's a big factor of why you want them, there is another Strelitzia, the Strelitzia cadeta, which is similar to the Nicolae, but stays a little bit smaller. It's not the easiest of plant to come by. Sometimes I see the seeds for sale. It's not by any means a small bird of paradise. It will still grow into a big tree, but I think it's like maybe a meter or two shorter. Their growth form is slightly different. I actually think that it's a really cool looking bird of paradise. Main thing about that isn't really the size difference. It's that it's supposed to flower more readily and more freely from a younger age. You know, with these big bird of paradise, like I mentioned, you gotta have a lot of heat a lot of light and everything for them to get them going and you'll still be waiting several years. So that might be something to consider if you can get your hands on one of those and maybe that would be the way to go. What you looking at Turbo? I don't know why he's whining, the gate's open, he's not trapped. You're free Turbo, there you go. Go live your life, enjoy your life. Just don't eat my plants while you're doing it. I think a lot of us aren't growing the white bird of paradise for its flowers. It would be great if it did, but really it's just a beautiful plant structurally. Beautiful glossy green foliage. Adds a lot of freshness to whatever space you put them in. Then when it comes to the pot, well, you can't even see that. I always repot mine into a plastic nursery can. It's just more affordable. These get really big. So once you get up to where they need something over a 20 inch container, using a ceramic pot just, isn't financially as easy to do. And uh, it's also not as practical if you move your plant around. I move mine around. So it comes outside during the summer, back inside when it cools off. I would much rather move around a plant that's in a plastic pot. And uh, I have in the past put Bird of Paradise, the white Bird of Paradise specifically, in large ceramic pots. And then when it was time to repot them, it was really hard to get them out of the ceramic planters. Had to tip them on their side. One person sitting on the pot and somebody else pulling the plant out of it. It was just a lot. It was a lot more stressful for the plant and risk breaking the ceramic containers that the pot's in. With a plastic pot, if it's really tight in there, you can just take a box cutter and cut it right out of that pot. It's not as attractive to have in the house, but you can just take that black nursery can and set it into something that's more decorative or a basket. Works great. That's just my preference. Only bring it up because I get asked about whether or not the type of pot you use matters. Really, I don't think it does except for factoring the things I just talked about and an unglazed clay pot is probably going to dry out too quickly for these. If you're having issues with the plant staying too wet, then maybe that would be the way to go. Typically for most people, I would avoid unglazed clay. It just dries so fast. As far as pests are concerned, they're prone to the same pests as most house plants. With the Bird of Paradise though, what's nice about them is these really broad white leaves. It's so much easier to clean them. I usually just put a drop of dish soap into some water, mix it up, and I take a sponge and make sure to wipe these down. I would say every other month probably when they're in the house or just really whenever I see dust on them. I don't do watering schedules and leaf cleaning schedules. When the leaves start to look dirty, I like to get them cleaned off. That way the, the light's more effective. You don't want to wear dust on top of the cells in there because then they can't 
get the light as efficiently. And doing that to the tops and bottoms of the leaves does help be preventative when it comes to pest management. If anything's there, you wanna get it off before it comes to problem. And again, that's just a general house plant thing, right? We wanna make sure to check the plants probably at least once a week for pests. Ideally, it's best to walk around and check your plants every single day. Just a quick little, hey, how you doing? Give them a look, little browse, and if you see something in there to take care of that as soon as it, <laughs> you see it. With plants like a bird of paradise, where for a lot of people, they just stick them in a corner in the house that gets some light, splash it with some water. They really don't do anything with the plant for years, years and years on end. I know some of y'all are out there and watching this and going, what is he talking about? These are like the easiest things to grow. They are, I agree. You don't have to do all that stuff to keep them alive. With plants that don't require a lot of attention, those tend to be the ones where the pests show up and then they can become a problem because we don't think to check them as frequently as we probably should because they're good, right? They're just chilling. Why would we be checking on them? Yeah, so just make sure to check in on them. Look for pests. And then another frequently asked question is about the growth on these, mostly in regards to repotting them. Sometimes when you repot a bird of paradise, particularly when they're younger and smaller, Sometimes they'll just hang out and not do much for maybe even a few months before you'll start to see new growth on them. They're okay, they're just spreading their roots out inside that pot and establishing themselves. Nothing to worry about. Doesn't mean that you need to repot it all over again or anything like that. Maybe consider how much light it's getting and warmth it's getting. More light and more warmth may go ahead and speed up the process of them getting themselves established into those containers, but generally it just take some patience. Once those roots start to fill out the container, they'll take off and get going. And then the last thing I want to talk about is really going to be more specific to the current times with all the houseplant craze that's been going on. A lot of the questions have been from people who are buying their bird of paradise and then within days of getting it home, they're starting to yellow, brown, and die. So here's what I think is going on there. Typically that means there's some kind of shot going on and or potentially just severe overwatering. In the US, a lot of commercial growers who are just mass producing these plants, they have them potted up in cocoa core. It's a fairly sterile medium. There's not much to it to feed the plants, so they have to go ahead and make sure that they're being fed all the time whenever they're watered. And those growers are down south in warm climates where having a soil that holds onto a ton of moisture, not a big deal because it's hot, it's going to dry more quickly. But you take that potting mix and then bring it into your home where it's between, I don't know, 68 and what, 76 degrees. I feel like that's an average range-ish where a lot of people keep their plants. Well, then that mix just isn't going to dry as quickly, right? Because it doesn't have the warmth to dry it out. So that is something to watch out for. If you buy your bird of paradise and that soil, it's just really crumbly, it's very monotone. It doesn't seem like there's anything in it. I would repot it sooner than later. Generally, give the plant a couple weeks to adjust to being moved. There's nothing wrong with that but getting it into a mix that has some organics in it would probably be best for the plant. And then back to the whole entire pandemic planting and the house plant craze. It used to be back in the day, you could buy like this bird of paradise, but I don't know. I think between 19.99 and 29.99 from a big box store. And it was already probably four and a half to five feet tall when I got it. That's not the way things are right now. We're in a place right now where the growers that all that large inventory has been moved out and now in those same 10 inch pots, you're getting plants that are just like tiny little things, anywhere from a foot tall to maybe two feet tall. And odds are those plants haven't established themselves in those 10 inch containers yet. The plants are declining very quickly when you get it home. Chances are there was some damage in those roots. Maybe the plant was moving around too much or the conditions for it changed just way too quickly. Going from being in a truck for who knows how long then into the store, who knows what kind of light it's getting and then going home with you, maybe it just went through too much. That's not typically something you have to worry about with the bird of paradise though, because they're sturdy. They're not super finicky plants. Like I said, so long as they aren't left to be too wet and they're getting enough light, they're usually not so hard to grow. If that happened to you, don't be discouraged probably nothing you did wrong if a plant's declining that quickly from when you purchased it. All right, I think that that is everything. Why is the light on? I have sensors on these bulbs. They don't work very well. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. I wanted to keep this fairly basic with an emphasis on the troubleshooting. That's where I get most of the questions when it comes to these is with the troubleshooting. Anytime you watch a plant video, check out those comment sections because people always have so much to add to care videos. And I appreciate it. It's called a plant community. Takes a team, right? Possible to remember everything in one video too. 
It's another reason that it helps to have that comment section. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.